The following program is presented by the HTM Podcast Network. To another episode of Turnbuckle Talk, presented by the HTM Podcast Network and in association with NDPW.com. Sponsored by Collar and Elbowbrand.com. Get 10% off when you use promo code JK Podcast at the checkout. In partnership with Phoenix at FNXFit.com. Get 15% off all your supplement needs when using promo code TB Talkpod at the checkout. Find us on Facebook. Instagram and Twitter by searching at TB Talk Pod. Listen on Podbean, iTunes, Google Podcast, Spotify, and all those other podcatchers. And now, here are your hosts, Big Joe and Carl Carafel. Hello, 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 and welcome, everybody. We are at episode 178. Today, Big Joe is on the show with me as usual. Uh, he's the creator, the one that got everything going, and then included me. Thank you, Big Joe, again for that, as we've talked about before. Big Joe, what have we got today? Yeah, guys, uh, another week has come and gone in the world of professional wrestling. But as usual, before we get rolling here, I figured you know we'll kind of see what everybody's been up to. And for those watching on video, uh, which the majority of you have been now, which has been very cool, you will notice that we have a third person with us today. We have... I forget how many times you've been on the show now, Rick, but we have RBV from over in the Homie Media Group. Welcome back to Turnbuckle Talk, sir. Well, gentlemen, yes, it is me. It's me. It's that honor the beat of the V. Richard Bronson, Vickery of the Homie Media Group. Uh, how many times has it been? Never enough with you two. As I say, the good, good times continue to roll on. Uh, but I do want to throw out there, gentlemen, can, can I get a copy of that open? Uh, mm. let, me, let me generate something organic for you there instead of that robotic voice. <laughs> uh, you guys are... You guys are coming off like a bunch of nerds that are up in Brandy Rhodes inbox, you know, DMing, DMing her those pecker picks. You know, we, we got to get you the vibe there to open this thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, definitely be looking into that. Definitely. I can send you over whatever is needed, and that would be amazing. For sure. All right, guys, let us kick off with our first topic. It's not really kind of current goings on professional wrestling, but it is currently what's kind of going on with a turnbuckle talk here. And uh, for those who have been paying attention, you uh, will know that the gorilla position recently was uh, sold uh, to another group. And um, we're no longer being featured. We're no longer uh, part of the grill position.com. But with that sad news, there is some positive news here, Carl and RBV. We have a new partnership that we want to let everybody know about and go ahead and roll that Carl. Why should you visit the chairshot.com? The chairshot.com is your home for hard hitting reviews, news, opinion, and analysis with attitude. Why? Because you're smarter than the average fan. The chairshot.com always use your head. So there you go. The chairshot.com. And that is kind of our, our, our new home uh, alongside with NDPW. And I just want to give a quick shout out to Greg over at uh, thechairshot.com and Mark Madison over at prowrestlingpost.com who helped kind of uh, hook me up with him and, uh, and to get things rolling there. It, was, uh, it came together relatively quickly and it was, it was a cool thing. And uh, yeah, this is uh, going to be another platform where we get featured here, Carl. This is, I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be cool. Me as well, I am super happy that you went through and were able to find uh, somewhere else for us. I really appreciate that. That was uh, good thinking on your part. And yeah, I mean, just thank you to thechairshot.com for uh, uh, them allowing us yet another platform to be able to broadcast our professional wrestling podcast, videocast, whatever you want to call it. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'd like to add real quick there, yes. Joe. Uh, by me jumping in, uh, I'd like to congratulate thechairshot.com for going out there and getting such an amazing catch. You know, when it comes to Turnbuckle Talk podcast, uh, I know the passion, the effort, 
uh, the drive, the desire, the fire, everything that you guys put in just behind the scenes to make this show go. And have been doing it for so long. Uh, he said, you know, it, it's hard to find a better rapport out there between host and, and, you know, and the reach that you have, the guests that you bring on, uh, the topics that you to cover, a hell of a find for the chairshot.com. Yeah, I, I was kind of, guys, I was kind of hoping that we were going to be able to do our 200th episode of the Gorilla Position, you know, with uh, Mr. Ryan uh, K. Bowman and Mr. Uh, Michael Malcaro. But just because we're no longer partnered up uh, with the GorillaPosition.com doesn't mean that we still don't have access to these guys. So when we do come up with our 200th episode, I'm still kind of brainstorming to see what we're going to do for that. But I want to have like a, make it a kind of a big deal and I will definitely be including uh, hopefully both of them but if I can get either one of those two guys like I said you know the, the gorilla position.com may have come to an end but you know we still have a very strong friendship and uh, it's basically like family with those guys and uh, with everybody that's on screen right now so let's get to our first kind of real wrestling discussion here guys we're talking all elite wrestling and they are possibly looking at adding a third hour to the dynamite program what are your guys' thoughts on this? Uh, I will, I'll let our guest, uh, Mr. RBV, go first on this. What do you think about third hour of Dynamite? Well, I, I'd seen this headline out there, and immediate, you know, immediately to me, clicking at least on that link and then following up with a little bit deeper into the story. Uh, initial headline was a little bit misleading, as I think this isn't necessarily serious talks going on right now, but it was more of a hypothetical if potentially if there would be an option here to add that third hour, what might that look like for AEW? Mm -hmm. And as Cody goes on to elaborate inside of their discussion, it really would be something almost completely separate from what we're getting with the two hour block of dynamite. So in my belief, you know, if they were to go this Avenue, you would see additionally is you'd get, you know, a, that shortened version of, of dark would be brought to the airwaves. I think what's really important to, you know, when we're looking at this topic here is this seems to be rooted in conversations and news that we had before, you know, as the COVID pandemic swept across the globe, where there was actually talks between TNT and AEW about adding a second show, a second set of programming another evening. Uh, and I think, you know, that might have been stalled as, you know, they're right now, they're just working so diligently so hard to try to get through just that one night that two hour block so again i think this is all just hypothetical going down the road good idea bad idea i know immediately you know fans think to the quality or the the drop off in quality when it comes to monday night raw when it goes to three hours it, it is a, it is a it becomes a much more you know I was what I'm going to say here. I mean, it becomes much more of a pain in the butt. I just mm -hmm. be very bland in, in what I'm saying here. Yeah. Um, of having to create that content. But, you know, a lot of people get on, on WWE about it, but it's not just that three hours of Raw. It's also the two hours of NXT, the two hours of SmackDown. So we're five, six, seven hours. Then you've got the international <laughs> television with main event, you yeah. know, seven, you, it, pay per views. So you might be looking at 10 hours in a week of content you have That's to create. Lot. You also have to look at if the network is happy with the actual numbers and what that's drawing in. You know, everybody likes to look at head the head to head with AEW and NXT. Well, really, all they have to do is satisfy their own networks. Uh, we've yeah. talked regularly, and I've been on the show here. We've had private conversations about it. TNT is thrilled with the turnaround that they are getting, the, the return on their investment from AEW, because it is absolutely killing what they were previously running in those time slots. That's not necessarily the same case when you go over to USA when they were, you know, doubling NXT numbers with reruns of Modern Family. Yeah, absolutely. But before Carl goes first, I'll kind of give my two cents on this here. And just, I mean, immediately my, my response wants to be, no, no, don't do it. You know, we don't want the three-hour WWE Raw burnout to happen. Like, like Rick had mentioned, you know, we have SmackDown on top of it. If you're a regular WWE viewer, you have Raw, you have SmackDown, you have NXT, plus you have any of the other WWE content that you, that you wish to consume. I mean, just a three-hour show, I mean, that's... That's damn near pay-per-view territory every single week. 
And I mean, no wonder the, the, the content gets watered down. You're spreading yourself so thin uh, with the time frame. Just, um, you know, I, I'm cool with the third hour if it's a completely different entity. Like, like Rick had said, if it's outside of the actual three hour window that is Dynamite, whether it's beforehand, you know, whether it's a couple hours after or something, but something entirely separate, like a separate hour of programming outside of the show. I'm okay with that, but just all in one block, it's just too much. I mean, I love wrestling as much as the next guy out there, trust me. But, I mean, three hours is a lot to sit through every single week on top of, you know, if you want to watch OVW, if you want to watch Ring of Honor, if you want to watch New Japan, you see where I'm going with this, right? It's a lot of wrestling to watch, even just as podcasters to try and cover everything. It's a lot to consume. What do you think, Carl? It definitely is a lot to consume, and and it's something that we have talked about uh you know, multiple times on this show about three hours with Monday Night Raw. Yeah. It's just way too much. Yeah. Um, I don't want to watch any show or movie that requires <laughs> I wear a catheter, says uh, Michael Mann. I, yeah. Stevie it, Richards. I, I yes. 100% agree with that. I, I agree with uh, you. Uh, absolutely, uh, Steve. That's uh, for those who aren't aware, that's uh, Mr. Stevie Richards from the Hover and the High Media, Media Group uh, in our chat room here. Uh, I absolutely agree. Uh, I, I have personally had a, a catheter in person, and it is not fun. <laughs> and I, I would liken it to watching uh, weekly WDA programming. Show okay, again I, I to Stevie. This was, I thought this was a family show here. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, we could mention a catheter. I mean, we're not this, going to the gory details about it, but uh, but yeah, I, uh, I, I, I do have to say though that if the programming is gripping, if it's actually got me at the edge of my seat, going, "Holy crap, what's next? What's coming up?" You got different movies that are out there. Let's say like some of the Lord of the Rings movies or something like that. They were a little bit longer. You're looking two and a half, three hours. But I was okay with that. I didn't have to pause or stop or, or leave the theater or whatever because I was enthralled with it. Mm-hmm. Whereas something with WWE right now, three-hour programming, yeah. yeah but, I, I, don't, I don't even – no, I can't do it. When you talk about those movies, Carl, you, you also need to you know realize that that's a niche audience. And right now one of the biggest problems facing professional wrestling is they are stuck – so deep inside that own bubble and inside their own bubble, they're not doing anything to grow their brands. They're not doing anything to expand those audiences. Mm -hmm. So by adding more, more is not better. Which is you're saying is yes, we need that greater impact. Less is so much more a greater impact. Something that's enthralling and exciting is going to keep people invested for the short, short term. There's hardly anything out there. I barely sit through a football game for three hours. That's, that's why they give you a nice break there in the middle to get the hell up, get away from it, relax and usually when you're, you know, when you're watching a football game or if you're like me, you know, you're out at the pub. So here you're interacting, you're doing everything else. But the football game just takes up a little bit of your time. It really, really does. And, and uh, Stevie's saying in the chat, uh, but they didn't have to produce another Lord of the Rings movie the next week. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, that's very true. Very, very true. That's right. We, we don't get 52 Lord of the Rings each year. No, no, not anywhere near that. So, yeah. And, there's, and even going back to, you know, Eric Bischoff is, you know, it's well documented. You know, when they added Thunder, it was a, a nightmare for him because they already gave him that third hour of Nitro. On top of that, they're trying to come up with the product. I guess if if they were pressed, if the network absolutely wants this, you don't want to turn down that potential advertising, that revenue there. Uh, I guess the best route would be to keep that, sec- that third hour as its own separate entity. Uh, don't don't tie over from one to the other. Wrap up your storylines, different talents highlighted in those on that on that program. And then roll in or on mm-hmm. the backside of dynamite. Dynamite. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, to, to for me to just put it into simplest terms when it comes to this, I will always, always, always prefer quality versus quantity. Uh, I, I would rather watch one good solid hour of highly entertaining wrestling than three hours of. Okay, is this done yet? I will always, exactly. always go with the first <laughs> option. All right, guys, on to the next topic here. This one is a bit of a hot-button issue uh, for the past week uh, for a little bit longer, not just in wrestling, uh, kind of society in general. Honestly, this comes up quite a bit. We're talking about digging up the past uh, when it comes to professional wrestling, I guess um, wrestlers in the business. And uh, this topic you know, largely stems from, you know, if you've been paying attention to the news, Excalibur from AEW was found to have used a, a the N-word, uh, probably over a decade or so ago, I believe it was in Pro Wrestling Gorilla, and somebody was able to dig that up and uh, 
Off to sensitivity training for Excalibur on EW. He wasn't on the most recent episode here. Uh, let us start with you here, Carl. Uh, what, what's your take on digging up the past? Uh, just uh, kind of in general, it doesn't necessarily have to be wrestling, but uh, we could try and keep it wrestling uh, centric here. Um, what's your take on this? Is this something that you know, are these people, is everybody always responsible for every single thing that they've done in their life? Is it always going to come back to haunt you every single time? Unfortunately, yes, it is. Um, should it be? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I really don't think that it should be. But is it going to? It definitely is, which is very unfortunate. Um, unfortunately, with the age of the Internet, everything is out there and it's always going to be out there no matter what. So you could try to hide it. You could try to lie about it. You could try to say that, you know, this didn't happen. But the proof is going to be there and you're always now going to be held accountable for whatever actions were taken, even if it was 10 years ago. Uh, for my take on this, I want to look at the at the incident itself. And, and I think uh, looking at where it took place is, is very important, too. We're talking about Pro Wrestling Gorilla, uh, which I believe is where uh, this incident occurred. You know, uh, Sami Zayn at the time, he was uh, El Generico. There were some other people involved. And to the best of my knowledge from the little bit of uh, digging that I've done with this is that this was largely storyline. And it wasn't necessarily, you know, what he wanted to, to say um, kind of in the heat of the moment type of a thing. I, I think that this was largely storyline based. And, and now, you know, we're just we're crapping all over this guy 10 plus years later for something that, that he did. It was probably part of a wrestling storyline. And then now it's like, oh, what a piece of garbage this guy is. You know, it's I, I think it's it's going a little too far in this particular case. I'm not using, I'm not saying kind of in general because obviously there's sometimes where it's obviously not acceptable. But in a pro wrestling context, we know sometimes that some of these companies and, and this company in particular, pro wrestling girl, they really like to push the envelope. Uh, I think that people aren't looking, they're not looking beneath the surface on this particular incident. What do you think, Rick? I, I think what we really have to examine here is. I like how you mentioned, let's look at society as a whole here. In this time of uncertainty, you know, we have got this this panic and sensitivity turned up to 10. You know, like in yep. professional wrestling, you, you take that persona, you turn it up to 10, hit 11, rip off, rip the knob off. Well, now we're dealing with this this uncertainty, this, this panic, this oversensitivity towards issues. Everybody in all these different cases, they're looking for a single blanket answer. Well, mm-hmm. that's not the case. Everything has, each situation needs to be, you know, defined by its own parameters is, you know, another hot button issue right now is kids going back to school. I'm sure you guys are having the same issues up there in Canada. Well, guess what? What works in New York City is not going to work in the middle of Ohio here. Mm -hmm. What works in the cornfields of Ohio isn't going to work in a big city like Cincinnati or Columbus. Each school district is going to be different in there. So I think when we look at these, okay, I guess these vulgar statements that have been put out there if it's of sexual nature of its racial whatever it might be context is king we need to examine each situation and then take the appropriate actions mm-hmm. uh, either one of you gentlemen believe that excalibur in any way has holds overly hatred towards any other eth- ethnic group i highly highly doubt it I mean, yeah, we, we don't personally know him or a bit in locker rooms him with anything like that. But this is the only instance that we're hearing about this. And we're going back years here into a wrestling script, a wrestling yeah. script that was actually proposed by the human tornado, who indeed himself is African-American. He said, let's get that heat out there. Mm-hmm. They were playing to a very niche audience there at Pro, uh, uh, Pro Wrestling Gorilla. So we have to take all of that into consideration. Yep. Now, overall, at the end of the day, was it the best idea in the world? No. Even back then? Probably no. not. But to sit here and now say that, oh, it, it, okay, now you've got to go through weeks of sensitivity training. You have to forfeit your paycheck. That is absolute BS. But on the other side of the coin there, AEW, Social Justice Warrior Wrestling, <laughs> they have made their bed. Sure. They have to lay in it. They have set this standard. So now going forward, any kind of incident like this, they're going to have to be held overly accountable. Uh, And they are. And for those that that don't understand, I mean, that that essentially started with uh, with Sammy, uh, Sammy Guevara, 
Uh, he had, uh, you know, years ago or a little while ago had, had made some remarks about, I believe it was Sasha Banks and they held him accountable for that. And now it's always going to be that way with well, AEW. Even... They're going to be accountable and they're going to have to hold people accountable, uh, or else they're going to be like, Oh, you know, what, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, favoritism is this now? Oh, because this person, you know, and then that it's, it's just going to be, you know, always, it's going to be, it's the new norm as is said all over the world today. This is going to be the new norm for at least all elite wrestling. Well, it's, you know, even further, I mean, when it comes to race, they, AEW goes out and announces, which I, I don't even really understand why they felt the need to do this, but they're, they're going to make, they're going to pound their chest and make that social stance because they're representing this new generation, wrestling yeah. for everyone, blah, 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 BS, where they banned the Hogans, not just Hulk, but Linda, from ever participating with anything to do with the promotion. What, what is that all about? I mean, I can get maybe, you know, people are pressuring, you know, pressuring, you know, pressing, asking questions about involvement with Hulk Hogan. Maybe he's just saying, you know, we prefer, you know, to distance ourselves from those generations. We're moving forward. There's other ways you know, that, that you, you avoid those certain putting your backing yourself in those corners, but Linda Hogan, what the hell? I, I, I don't know. I listen to podcast pro wrestling podcast every day. If it's, mm-hmm. you know, you gentlemen, if it's my brothers over on the Hameen media group, all across the board, if it's veterans of the business, I don't think I've ever heard anybody clamoring for the return of Linda Hogan <laughs> inside the world of professional <laughs> wrestling. Yeah. It's absolute BS. Yeah. But overall, as as we look at society where everything now is seemingly offending someone and you have these major corporations willing to kneel down and bow at the whim of these social justice words, it's absolute BS, you know, to paraphrase something that Michael Jargo has said regularly. When once everything becomes offensive, nothing will be offensive. Yes. That, that that is very very true, and, and to give maybe a bit of an extreme example, and uh, if Stevie's uh, still in our chat or still watching here, he can definitely relate to this one. If New Jack would have been around these days, could you just imagine, even uh, trying to attempt not not, not the, even the, the whole, everything that that was done with him, even just like one instance? I mean, Twitter and uh, you know the social justice warriors would be having a heyday. Um, well, and this guy wouldn't be able to work heyday. anywhere. <laughs> They can have their heyday because it's interesting you mentioned somebody like New Jack with that just not just old school, but mm-hmm. I mean that extreme old school mentality. Yeah. Uh, I had I had the honor opportunity this morning on the Monday locker room, part of the Hameen Media Group at hackerhameen.pobbing.com, uh, to to sit and listen and grow under that learning tree of just a, a brief conversation with with Rip Rogers. Mm. And one of the points that that he hammered home to us. Inside the world of professional wrestling, they need to stop letting the marks and smarks dictate the direction of the business. You need to stop pandering to their wants and needs and just realize what a consumer wants and feed that need. Well, that's a definitely yeah, a good point you, with that. One, that's right on the head. You've hit it right yeah. there. And that's, that, uh, I'm just repeating uh, from the hustler himself, You know, the man that's been responsible for you know, the likes of John Cena, Randy Orton, mm-hmm. uh, who else do we have? Batista. Yeah. Cody, Cody Rhodes himself. You know, all of those names, names that OVW built that are superstars still today that WWE rely, relies on because their own current system can't produce those same superstars. Yeah. No. Absolutely not. You know, and you had mentioned John Cena, their example, when he was doing the uh, the Thugonomics uh, routine. That probably wouldn't have flown today either. You would have people whining, complaining about that one too. Oh, it's being insensitive or it's being racist or whatnot. So, yeah, it's uh, interesting to see how things have evolved uh, with uh, in respect to that. Um, next topic here, guys. And this was uh, something that uh, Rick had actually turned me on to when I was working my – to correct myself, night job. I said day job earlier, so I have to make it clear. I work at night job, apparently. And um, Rick told me about this show called Talk and Shop a Mania. And so I'm like, you know, what is this? And who's doing this? And until I was finally able to pry the information out of Rick here, uh, this was uh, done by Carl uh, Anderson and uh, Doc Gallows. Uh, obviously, there's uh, some affiliation here with uh, with Impact. And uh, you know, we had Rocky Romero as well. We had quite a few very notable names uh, on this. Did you get a chance to check this out at all here, Carl? 
As of yet, I have not. Okay. Um, everybody knows that my night job, quote unquote night job, um, usually has me working at least six days a week. So I have not been able to uh, order and watch this as of yet. Okay. But uh, from conversations that I have seen on Facebook between uh, Mr. RBV and uh, others, uh, I, I definitely do want to see this. Mm -hmm. um, it looks as though, and, and from what I was reading, it sounds like it was a hoot of a time. Uh, before I throw it over to RBV, I'll give my little take on this. Uh, I was able to watch this show in a perfectly legal manner. And uh, I did get a chance to, to watch it. And uh, I got to say, uh, just kind of general opinion, I got to say, uh, very silly and stupid, but highly entertaining at the same time uh, i there are some legitimate moments here especially in the quote-unquote main event i mean where i was legitimately laughing and uh, and thoroughly enjoying myself i found it definitely entertaining um but there is a few catches when it comes to this and I, i'll throw this over to, to rick because i think he could probably explain this better when it comes to this and i think he knows what i'm talking about um of how this is being perceived outside of the wrestling bubble that we occupy well, you know, going into this thing, you know, it was just going to be 100% pure wrestle crap. <laughs> and that's absolutely what it was. <laughs> uh, but to me, what, what worries me is that when you walk that fine line between parody and just outright mocking professional wrestling. <laughs> one, of the, one of the positives I can say about it, it seems that this thing, and that's exactly who it was created for, it remains deep inside of the smart bubble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's there's so many individuals just, you know, still with inside the wrestling bubble that didn't even know this thing existed. So this was made for your ultra ultra smart. Uh, I'm sure. hoping that's where it remains mm -hmm. because I don't want this to cross over in the general PR. I don't want to turn on, you know, the daytime talk on ESPN or F FS1 and see them running certain clips from this thing. Those that they're allowed, because, I mean, we've got they're obviously they're going for yeah. the, the F-bomb record. Adult. Uh, big race dildo emporium is represented throughout this thing uh, it's very risky but um, but yeah. i but when you know when it crosses that that line and those types of programs start running with this thing it turns into a joey ryan dip you know dick flip situation where now you've got people instead of wanting to tune in and see what's going on with professional wrestling and as we were talking about earlier and growing those audiences they're just laughing at the key word is at pro wrestling yeah uh, that's what kind of bothered me about it but i do got to say you know a hat tip to the guys that put this together they realized that there are a bunch of fanatics marks that are going to fork they're getting 15 dollars a pop this thing mm -hmm. on fight now they've gone ahead uh just like you find gentlemen do they have teamed up with collar and elbow they have got a full line of apparel merchandise getting ready to be launched yeah, here for this yep. thing they are going to make a pretty penny with this thing ultimately that's what we're here for or they're there for inside of the business is to turn a profit you know and, and they definitely knew uh, their audience going into this and they definitely care to it and a good portion of it uh, was definitely a big middle finger to wwe specifically i mean there were a lot of uh, hints and pokes and prods there and specifically in the, the very last uh, match for the show uh, i know you didn't get a chance to watch this here carl but uh uh, Rick and, and I can definitely give our takes on this. Uh, in the WWE at uh, WrestleMania, we had the Boneyard match. Well, at Talk and Show Mania, we had the Boner Yard match. Um, what did you think of the Boner Yard match, Rick? Um, I, I got to say, for again, as silly and stupid as this was, I, I, I was laughing quite heartily throughout this entire thing. I, 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 got, I, I, I have to admit, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I don't. I think I just I chuckled a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, and again, to me, and even more so than just, you know, popping a few chubbies for some ultra smarks. <laughs> uh, one of the, the bigger issues here is it it walks again, walks that fine line. Yeah, one of the really things does. that we're missing to pro wrestling, you know, I, I've said it here on your guys show before. I regularly, you know, kind of beat this drum is what pro wrestling is missing, that we are no longer in awe of the superstars. Yep. Uh, and that's the reason we've got cosplay Jesus and Scooby Doo throwing super kicks <laughs> on Sean Spears inside the ring. We, we've we've gotten into a generation where we're not in awe of the superstars. Fans actually believe they can be the superstars. So now what I've seen here 
what they presented, it was, you know, low budget. They're going to turn a huge profit, I said. I, nothing against those guys that put this thing together. They knew their market. But it's going to, you know, relay that message that anyone can do this. And we're going to have a bunch of copycat stuff. Just And it's, to me, I'm just worried it's going to snowball and get out of control. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, you know, I, I don't think this is going to get huge kind of main street, mainstream appeal. Sorry, and uh, you know, I think it definitely should stay that way. You know, if some of the mainstream news networks, you know, were to, to get a hold of this, I'm sure that um, it could well, uh, potentially you know, give professional wrestling a bad it, name. You know, yeah, it's it's not. I mean, no one's going to like in a serious platform going to run with this thing, no. but it could end up in a comedy clip. And yeah. again, it's people laughing at wrestling. I and comedy, comedy's great in wrestling. Yeah. I mean, we've all seen Carl's matches. We laugh our ass off. That's right. <laughs> but oh, for the right so now, so now for, for somebody that, uh, like myself, who has not seen it yet, but has seen a lot of people on, on like Facebook and, and Twitter and stuff, kind of not necessarily going off in a bad way about this, but kind of like enjoying what they, what they saw. Is this more of a... Um, shot at professional wrestling or would you call it more a bunch of guys getting together and just uh letting loose having some fun and actually making some money from it how would you like personally i would liken it more to the second one more like just kind of letting loose and having some fun uh and, and as rick mentioned you know it does does walk a very fine line between having fun and poking fun so and i, I thought the, the the person i thought that they struck a fairly nice balance there well it, it, and again you know I, and I say i understand the 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 point the purpose behind it uh, i don't know if if stevie's still with us here but i can make that comparison you know you go back you used to be able to to laugh and have a lot of fun and you really enjoyed the antics of the BWL mm-hmm. as they, they poke fun at the NWO. And that's what you kind of got a lot of this here is it's a, maybe at some point that the actual talents themselves aren't so better. They realize it's a business, but there is that perception amongst fans that it's like, Oh my God, how could you fire me? That big middle finger. So yeah. they're, they're playing to that. And it's that parody. I'm not completely opposed to this thing. I don't want to completely knock it, you know, to sound like a, I'm coming off like a, a cornet or somebody here. But just to to walk that fine line, and believe me, I think this is going to stay buried deep inside with the bubble, but walking that fine line where you're mocking professional wrestling to the point where, where we could possibly be growing it, other individuals are simply laughing at it. I totally understand that sentiment. All right, guys, let us, uh, before we go to our, our viewer question for this, we can peel back the curtain a little bit on, uh, on this particular topic. Let's take a little bit of a break here and hear from one of our sponsors here. Carl, uh, do you want to uh, hit the old break thing, or do you want me to uh, see if I can get it again this week? Go ahead and do it yourself. Okay, let's see. Let, let us hear from our friend Al Snow over at CollarNoblebrand.com. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand, the wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. The dictionary defines hero as a person who is admired or idealized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. Being a hero in life is far more than words printed on a page. It takes an unwavering code, a compass that points true north, always. And in times like these, it takes sacrifice. Hero shouldn't be a word defined by a dictionary. It's a word that should be defined by the best of us. Hero has a new definition. 
So there you go, a little word from Colin Elbrew and um, our friend uh, Al Snow. Uh, I love uh, that, especially that first uh, segment. Uh, just hearing him talk about professional wrestling, even just to him, you can sense the, the passion and the love and the desire for professional wrestling. And it definitely uh, comes across um, in the, the apparel and in the people who also buy it. It's all it's it's that combined love and, and passion for wrestling that kind of brings us all together, even uh, us now here on Termical Talk. So it's a great representative right. of that whole philosophy with professional wrestling. That's why I love the Color and Evil brand. And we do have to make sure that we let you know that uh, we are Color and Elbow's first sponsored podcast. Yep. Uh, we were the first ones to jump on the bandwagon as a podcast, and they allowed us to come on and be part of the family. And we're so happy and thankful for that. And if you guys want to, go to collarandelbowbrand.com. If you use promo code J. K podcast all one word you will get yourself 10 percent off your entire order as well that helps us because we get a small kickback from that so to continue to bring you these podcasts over Streamyard as a video cast or to put it out onto the platform of podbean like we do every tuesday that extra little bit that comes in definitely helps. And we appreciate anybody that goes and uses our promo code. When you, when you go to, when you go to collar and elbow to get your boner yard shirt, Think Big Joe and Carl. That's right. <laughs> Fantastic. Good catch, Rick. All right. Let's uh, go to our, our viewer uh, question for this week. And this one, you know, again, you know, may seem a little silly to the the seasoned uh, wrestling fan out there, but there are some people that are new to watching professional wrestling and, and you know, they want to get a little insider knowledge. They want to you know, just to peel back the curtain a little bit to, to get some insider knowledge here. And this is a, a relatively simple one this week here, guys. Uh, are chair shots real? And, uh, you know, I'll throw this over to... To Carl first, you know, you know being an in-ring competitor um, for you know for, for quite a number of years, tell us about uh, chair shots. What's it all about? Well, first off, kayfabe is dead, yep. so we can talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> RBV down there shaking his head. No, um, I would like to think that kayfabe is not dead, uh, but unfortunately, K- in K-fabe today's age. Need- Kayfabe just needs to be allowed to evolve, but that's mm-hmm. what we, yeah. we can do a whole other show on that. Absolutely. You're de- definitely, we idea, could. Yeah. Um, so I will peel back the curtain just a little bit, so to speak, with chair shots. I have been um, subjected to chair shots before. Uh, I can tell you that it's real. It, it's, it's not a fake chair. Mm-hmm. It's not like uh, plastic uh, to made to look like metal. Um, it's, it's, it's actually metal. Uh, now there's different types of metal that are out there, right? You got steel, you got aluminum, you got like all these different uh, types of, of metals that are out there. Um, when I was working, they generally tried to find like an aluminum, uh, chair just because it was lighter Mm -hmm. and, uh, could not give as much damage in real life so to speak still looked amazing and don't get me wrong i've been hit by actual steel chairs as well but it's it's all in how it's done Mm -hmm. as with a ballet the performance is all in how it's done the same with the professional wrestling business how -hmm. it's done how you take it how it's given Mm -hmm. so as you can see in the photo there uh, you know, it, it looks really good. It sounds really good. But was there actual physical damage that happened? Probably not. Mm-hmm. If you see the way, that, and it looks like John Cena down there uh, getting yeah. hit by Edge with a concerto. Um, you, you, you look, the, the, the top of the chair is, is pretty much hitting the top of the other chair, which is going to give you that amazing sound. And as long as... No sell Cena sells it properly. <laughs> um, it looks amazing. And that's that's what it is. And, and then people are, are talking about uh, headshots with the chairs as well. Look closely. Um, the majority of them nowadays with all of the uh, talks about concussions and and the repercussions from concussion, concussions. Um, people are putting their hand up. So they're, 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 they're very quick with it. They're very smooth with it. 
a chair is coming at them. They've got their hand up super quick. It's, it's hitting their hand instead of actually hitting their head. And then they just sell the move properly. That's what it's all about. So chair shots and wrestling, are they real? Um, yeah, they're real. Uh, they're real chairs. Um, somebody's, you know, really swinging that. Um, <laughs> there's a real sound that comes from it. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I don't know how much more to really say. Yes, they're real. I've always said, you know, when I've been asked, uh, are they really getting hit with this chair? I always kind of say yes and no. It, d- it depends on, uh, on the scenario. If the chair is just kind of being swung at their back, you know, typically it'll make contact with their back. It's really, especially when it's an open view, it's n- nearly impossible to quote unquote fake that, um, you know, going for the head, you know, outside of the attitude era. And uh, unless your name is Cody Rhodes, um, typically the chair isn't making direct contact with your head because I mean, we just, we can't sustain feuds and whatnot. If we're constantly cracking each other in the head <laughs> legitimately with a chair every single time. So it's got to be done in a way to look really good. And a lot of times it depends, you know, especially if it's being shown on TV, how it's shot with the camera to make it look good. But um, we, we can't just be legitimately smoking each other in the head all the time, especially. So I, I got to say, this, this subject seems uh, a little suspicious. I mean, someone actually sent in a question about a chair shot the same week that you guys are joining thechairshot.com. <laughs> <laughs> seems like a coincidence right? and uh, you would be correct it is entirely a coincidence i gotta say it just, yeah, I, just I, I don't, so happens. I don't want you to pull back the curtain or anything here but <laughs> I don't know, it just seems a little odd to me uh you guys are right you know it's it's one of those things that in like so many aspects of professional wrestling uh it's that fine line it, it's it's very real across the board anything just slightly could go wrong you could have a serious serious injury on your hands uh and throughout the the years the different eras and styles uh they they have worked to protect the chair shot different ways. Uh, if it's from, you know, trying to use a hand to soften that blow to, you know, using more so where you slide it down off the back of the shoulder, top of the back, to the ultra violent extreme style where, you know, they're they're selling that reality of it and they're just openly blasting one another <laughs> upside their heads. Uh, I would think in 2020, what we know medically in when it comes to the seriousness and the long lasting effects of concussions that you're not going to see that across the board. Uh, mm-hmm. When we talk about top promotions, you know, like WWE, they've actually, they've gone so far to, to ban the, the headshot with the chair. Uh, yeah. And I would hope that no matter where you are around the globe, that even to the mom pop VFW independence, that they realize the, you know, the seriousness behind the long-term effects here. And if they would follow suit, when it comes to, you know, openly a chair shot to the head. Absolutely. So, yep. Yeah, um, to whoever uh, sent in uh, that question, you know, great question for, yeah. you know, if you're, whoever if you're you are, there. Charlie, yeah. Charlie from Starksville. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as, as always, we, we appreciate um, questions and, and keep them coming. I, I love addressing them on the show and talking to them, especially you know, if it has to do with uh, some inside knowledge, uh, having Carl as, uh, as a co-host uh, makes uh, those questions uh, easy and fun to answer. So, uh, uh, keep those coming. Um, let's get to a little bit of breaking news because, you know, since I wrote the run and sent it to you guys here, there, there have been some things that have happened. And I guess the most notable thing right off the bat, I'm not sure if Carl really has a, a graphic ready for this, but we are talking the XFL is back in uh, the headlines here, guys. And uh, we have some interesting news regarding this. The Rock and um, Redbird Capital have purchased the XFL to the tune of $15 million. Uh, let's start with uh, with you, Rick. What's, what's your take on Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, being part owner and part uh, and just buying the XFL? What do you think? Uh, is this, does this mean that they're coming back, or what's the deal here? Well, there's so many details that, that still need to be released. What was actually available for mm-hmm. sale there? Was it? I mean, a tape library, I don't think so much. The short existence, no. the inventory. Uh, but absolutely got to say, this is a steal. 15 mm-hmm. mil? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to go in here and purchase the, the remains of an entire sports league. Uh, as you know, with, this had broke when we were closing out this morning's episode of the Monday Locker Room, mm-hmm. uh, as we were live right here on StreamYard on Twitch, uh, right at the close here. And one of the things that, you know, that, that people have to question, those backdoor dealings, especially inside professional wrestling uh, is, is somewhere deep inside of this. I mean, we know we got the rock on the surface it is the mastermind. It, are we going back to, it was me, Austin. It was me all along. <laughs> uh, it, 
is Vince tied into this somehow? Because we heard rumors well, a couple of weeks ago that he might try to buy this thing. You know, buy everything back that it did yeah. through the uh, bankruptcy courts and all that. Uh, so they, there's still there's so much, and maybe they're going to re uh, not like rebrand but restructure. That, that could you know, be it. everything that we see. But well, we've seen that there there was somewhat of a marketplace for this. That mm-hmm. there was a desire for this form of football, and especially in St. Louis. And you saw that they were absolutely they they were starving for some f- form of professional football. Uh, they were gravitating towards it. I mean, is there other markets that they could, you know, move some teams from? I, I think, again, you know, you're looking at, you want those major markets, but I just don't think there's enough of that slice of that pie, especially coming out of this COVID era, you know, like in a New York. Mm-hmm. Can we go somewhere else that where they could support something like this? And, um, you know, obviously not everybody is in favor or necessarily a big fan of the XFL uh, One of our loyal uh, viewers here, Don Lewis saying they should just let the XFL die. It, it's just dumb. Um, you know, another, we can also look at right now. I mean, what is, what is the marketplace like? Mm. Where could they grab their slice of the pie? We have seen right now. And, you know, it, it, we could spin off into a whole other topic on subject onto this, Yeah, but there is a major backlash. The NHL, the NBA, MLB, they are looking at wrestling esque ratings just because people are tuning that people are tuning in because they want sport and they're getting political a political news platform instead. Yeah. And, and it's not to dismiss any of you know what's going on with COVID, with you know, racial tensions, any of those items. Those are very serious issues. But at some point you need that release. And so, as society, so many of us were looking for that in the return of sports. You know, I know it, when I tuned into it, I regularly, I said, I'll give them five minutes. I'll give them five minutes. Yep. Get through all that. And then I want sports. And once it, once we get into those, they start pushing those boundaries, I'm gone. Yep. And I think, you know, it's proving now. You know, we're, we've seen, you know, MLB and NBA with numbers in the low millions to, you know, 700,000. Yeah, nothing great. So maybe, maybe if you came in and you avoided all of that, I, I don't know. There, there's still so much that we got that there's to learn about this situation. For sure. Uh, before we get to our match of the week segment here, not breaking news, but since we have you on here, Rick, I wanted to kind of get your take on this topic and to follow up with uh, Carl. And this is, well, I haven't really heard much more about this. So I mean, I guess it's potentially still a possibility here um, of WWE looking to host SummerSlam on a boat. Um, what, what do you think of this, Rick? Uh, at, at this rate, uh, I think the interest level, they could have this thing on, uh, you know, something similar to what Carl enjoyed with the with the Jericho cruise. Yeah. Or they could have it on a dinghy on a rowboat. <laughs> I, I don't think that they're, they're no. to me, I just, if they're looking at this thing as a PR stunt to try to draw some extra interest to this. No, no. The, the bottom line is you can put all the, the frills into this thing you want. Bad television is bad television. You have a plethora of superstars that no one cares about, even to the extent you have Seth Rollins in an interview this week openly talking about, once again, the, the Monday Night Messiah putting his foot in his mouth going out and just openly saying that, oh, yeah, our women's division is seriously lacking without Becky and Charlotte. And then he tries to, he tries to correct, no pun intended here, the ship by saying they're yeah. trying really hard. <laughs> they're, they're putting they're in the trying. work. Well, no, you just told us that, Seth, you just told us they suck. Yeah. That this is a step down. Why should we be tuning uh, in? Uh, They're not even the coworkers are not are not capable of building up new stars. Yeah. So we don't have any stars to invest in. And these storylines are just beyond awful. Mm-hmm. And, and it's to the point now that you know, really across the company, they're only running like four major storylines. They're just recycling them. I mean, you got I mean, just within the last couple of weeks, you had people running around with titles that they didn't rightfully win, claiming to be champions. You had that going on with R-Truth and Sasha Banks. Both of your world title pictures were you had McIntyre and Dolph were about, I made you, I brought you to the show, I brought you up. And then the same story being told with Braun and Bray. You've got factions trying to recruit people that are getting turned down left and right. They're only running a handful of really bad storylines. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll uh, dust off an old expression I don't think I've used in quite a while. Polished turd is still a turd. 
So right. you can make it look oh. nice and shiny, but if it's still a turd, yeah, it's still a turd, guys. I mean, it's just the, the cold yeah. hard reality of it. So uh, to yeah, me, just land, uh, land, sea, or air. It's st- yeah, it's WWE still, still sucks. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's unfortunate, it's kinda, you know, but it is what it is. Yeah. To kind of go along with that, with the uh, rumors and speculations uh, that are going on, there's even yeah. uh, rumor speculation that uh, WWE might want to take SummerSlam to Indonesia because they have zero COVID-19 cases. Wow. I've heard right? Saudi Arabia well, I mean, as well. Yeah, I, I mean, you, you can have people, you can have a, a, a an arena full of people, and that's what, well, if you take a look, you know, over that way. Yep. That person right there has always been complaining about there's no fans and it's just not the same. True. So the WWE could potentially do something like that. Will they? I doubt it because, I mean, we're coming up. It's so freaking close right now to uh, becoming a show. And I think it's just going to happen at the performance center yeah. um, as every other show has happened right now. Yeah. Um, maybe if this COVID stuff is still going on, uh, maybe like a survivor series is something that they can possibly look towards to take yeah, somewhere else late, that will allow. But I mean, other than that, um, I don't know. Right. Rick's got something there. What you got? Well, I, Rick? I was just thinking, you know, they, they've been wanting to kill Survivor Series for how many years now? Yeah. Since they got away from the traditional format. Maybe for for WWE, it might be a blessing in disguise because they wouldn't be allowed to have the traditional Survivor Series matches with social distancing. No, you just can't. Right? You just can't. All right. Let's Wait, what, what would that mean for the Rumble? <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if they can even do that at this point. Uh, they may have to uh, maybe make that more like a gauntlet style match. I think it'd be about the only way you could do the Rumble at this point. Oh, God, that would be terrible. That would be terrible. But <laughs> yeah. speaking of uh, terrible, let's go to things that are not terrible here. At least uh, I would hope so. And let's go to our match of the week segment here, guys. All right, Rick, with you being the guest on here, I will let you go first. Let us tell you, I've already had a sneak peek at this, but uh, what was your match of the week for this past week here? This one, uh, I think, is kind of inspired by your experience this week, correct? Yeah, oh, just this morning, you know, uh, in honor of the hustler Rip Rogers, uh, we had talked about here on the show today, less is more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got a match for everyone. It's, it's free for everyone. Just go over to YouTube and search Rip Rogers versus Giant Baba from All Japan. It happened back on January 28, 1990. This is going to take you all of two minutes and 45 seconds to watch. <laughs> and the in-ring action is probably about 30, or the, the physical action is about 30 seconds. What's so masterful about this, and less is more, and the personality and how someone can get themselves over, especially in front of an audience, as we know, the Japanese fans are, you know, it's wrestling to this day. And especially back then a true sport, but the flamboyancy and the way he works it and kind of gets you in and installs back. He keeps going for those ropes and realizes that when he's measuring up, you know, the giant Baba, he's going to hold back a little bit here. Starts off the match. He's combing his hair. He's getting himself prepped up. They absolutely cannot stand it, but they're kind of, they, they get into it. They're brought by the act. So they're joining along masterful piece of work here one of the things i want to put out you know everybody thinks in today's wrestling you got to have these high flying spots you got to get over pro wrestling is about persona and moments yep and if if you are a talent and you're it if 95 percent of the time you got to be off your feet to get over you're not going to get over that's a, that's a fair statement all right, for myself here, uh, I believe that uh, for the first time, I think I might have a repeat uh, on my match of the week because I believe I have picked this one before. But uh, I'm going to pick it again because I came across it, and I think I've watched it uh, you know, probably four or five times uh, since I came across it again. I just I enjoyed it that much. Uh, this was coming from 2016 with our, the Ring of Honor Reach for the Sky Tour, and this uh, particular match happened in Liverpool. And this was actually Marty Skrull's very first match inside of Ring of Honor versus Dalton Castle. Uh, 
uh, this match went just over about 22 minutes, I believe. And I mean, just a, a fantastic back and forth. I mean, you want to talk, you know, two great wrestlers and two great characters inside of professional wrestling. And just to, to end that match, uh, Marty with that umbrella shot to Dalton's head, you know, followed by a uh, referee stoppage. I mean, just a great uh, match. Uh, I would say pretty much the exact opposite of <laughs> Rick's uh, match of the week. You know, a longer drawn out match with a, a lot more kind of going on. But uh, yeah, um, free to watch on YouTube right now and uh, go check it out. Just uh, search Marty versus Dalton Castle and that'll probably be the first one that comes up for you. I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it if you uh, do call yourself a wrestling fan. I thought that uh, Rick's pick there was was pretty great. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, a 30-second match, and and Rick gave us a five-minute explanation of a (laughs) 30-second match. It was just fantastic. Um, And and, uh, he's he's talking about back in 1990, Mm -hmm. um, my match of the week actually is coming from the year before that. Uh, We're looking 1989. Uh, I came across this as... uh, most people know we came up on the anniversary of uh, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper's passing mm. uh, just recently. So I went to the WWE Network because I still pay for it because I enjoy watching these classic things. So I went back and I found some Rowdy Roddy Piper and I found something that was a little bit different than what you would normally see. This was they called it a lost tape, I guess. Um, there was no commentary. Hmm. It was just like a hard cam. It seemed like a hard cam, but then like during the entrance, they like panned over and then came back again. And it was, it was just seemed very, um, amateurish, I guess you could almost say, but the match itself was Piper versus Rick rude. That Hmm. happened on October 31st, 1989, just classic, classic professional wrestling awesome roddy piper comes out there somebody's got a a big banner sign that they had made that they brought with them that said uh um ravishing roddy uh uh, piper (laughs) and uh it was it was like just great so he grabbed that from the fan got into the ring was holding up this this sign that said ravishing roddy piper just classic great stuff coming from Roddy. Nice. Then he took his kilt off and he used it as almost like a Toro bull flag that he was holding. And uh, Rick Rude comes running at him and he like, it, it was, it was just great stuff within the matchup as well. Roddy Piper grabs the legs of uh, Rick Rude and like pulls him and he's down on the mat. And then Piper's <laughs> trying to wiggle out to get him outside of the ring. And then, uh, you know, your Rick Rude grabs the legs of the referee, Earl Hebner. Shout out to Earl. Yep. And uh, Earl, you know, does the whole, you know, shake. And then, then Earl falls down. And then uh, there's a there's a double down that happens. And then the ref is down. And then, like, it was just a classic matchup. And I was just sitting there going, I'm, I'm loving this. Why can't we have this now? Like, this is just, I love it. And that was, uh, yeah, October 31st, 1989. Rowdy Roddy Piper versus Rick Rude, and that is my match of the week. Very interesting choice. I may have to go and check that out because that includes one half of, I mean, the other, the one half of that match was my favorite professional wrestler of all time, Mr. Uh, Roddy Piper. And, I mean, Rick Rude, I mean, how cool and how great of a villain was he? I mean, he would literally usually have, like, the face or the face of the wife of, the, of his opponent uh, basically – on his crotch, on his on his attire. So I mean, I mean, just yep. uh, just harkening back to the, the fantastic days of professional wrestling. That's that's when I'm gonna definitely have to go and check it off to hit you up for a link or um, where exactly to find that because I I yeah. want to watch that now that you've talked about it. All right, guys, let us uh, end off the show here with our final segment for this week. Let's do our showstopper segment. All right, so this week's Showstopper segment really just kind of revolves around, uh, I'll let Carl put up the graphic, and I think that's a good uh, um, thing to name the uh, the topic here, and it's just no respect. And uh, th- this uh, topic um, largely stems from one particular individual, and I'm sure we'll maybe find some others or we'll kind of build off of this topic here. But uh, recently, over in AEW, Cameron, formerly from the, the WWE, uh, was... Brought, uh, she was signed to a deal, I believe. I believe she's going to be there on the regular, and I just I found it really 
that one in particular, I know they've signed some other talent recently as well. It was one that really kind of made me scratch my head because going back to her tough enough days, you know, she was very verbal and was quoted as saying, I don't even like wrestling. So let's bring her into this new company to have her wrestle. Uh, just uh, For me, it, just, it, it felt really strange that you would bring in somebody that essentially doesn't even like her necessarily. Uh, I, I can't say for certain that she doesn't respect wrestling, but right going back to the beginning, it definitely felt that way. It was just like somebody in it for the wrong reasons. And uh, that, that's kind of what has sparked this topic here. So, you know, again, let Rick be our guest here. I'll, I'll let him go first and uh, let uh, him give his take on this. So, Joe, are, are you pulling a 180 from one of our kickoff conversations? You, you want to hold somebody accountable for a statement they made years ago. You're, you're going to refuse to let them grow as an individual, as a professional, simply because they said something years ago that, that struck you the wrong way. But, I mean, to point my finger specifically at, at Cameron, has she even, since she left WWE, has she done anything in wrestling? Like, she, as far as I know, she hasn't really been doing very much. Well, so I, I just said that, that's what, again, what made it seem so odd. It was just, like, you bring in this person that didn't even seem to like wrestling in the first place, and then now you're bringing her in to do something she doesn't like to do? Or, uh, I, I get, uh, from what you're saying, her opinion that, or her, her outlook in this has changed, correct? Well, I don't know to the extent. I don't know if she's head over heels yeah. ready to make this incredible jump into the deep end of professional wrestling. Yeah. Uh, but again, as we talk about, blanket answers and looking at each individual circumstance we don't know all the details of this or what her role is going to be inside of this i know mm-hmm. you were you were immediately put off there, Joe. you and i had this conversation right when yeah. it happened that you felt you know it, someone else could have been in that spot mm-hmm. but what if this spot is set up obviously they could play play that card where she is going to generate tremendous heat because she had that stance mm-hmm. on professional wrestling all those years ago, and maybe hasn't been as regular as regularly active throughout the years, but she has been out there growing her own brand, working in in the fitness world, and you, when she had spent her time coming up inside WWE, learning or tentatively learning, trying to learn those ropes, yeah. she de- obviously developed a close relationship with Brandy Rhodes. I mean, that's got to be your connection here. Yeah. Anywhere, anywhere in life that you're going to get, it's about who you know. It's something it's you, know, you regularly hear uh, was something that was was overly stressed this morning by Rip Rogers inside of wrestling. It's about who you travel with, who you know, where they go, those connections that you make. I mean, obviously, that's why they went and got her here. It could be something on the on the very cheap for them. Yeah. She's going to come in here, get a little bit of exposure. She can push her her fitness brands, her modeling, whatever it might be. And you look at the pairing here with her and Nyla, with Nyla Rose, that inside of itself makes complete sense where Nyla's going to have to go out there and do all of this work and mm-hmm. carry her stuff, which is going to make her look like, you know, that over the top monster that she should be. Uh, but to your point about those that get into the business simply because they don't respect it. Now, I don't want to say that these individuals didn't respect professional wrestling, but we yeah. could talk about some of the biggest names of our lifetimes and trace you know their beginnings they weren't dr- growing up dreaming of breaking into the business you know actively seeking out where can i learn who can train me who can get me in the door yeah it came down to the green baby it was all about money this is a business now i understand you know at some points and it's just not wrestling it's you know you see it in sports regularly oh these overpaid millionaires i'd go out there and do it for for free or a fraction of it mm-hmm. well if you did you're an idiot yeah. Because this is a job to those individuals. True. I mean, you guys, Hulk Hogan, hmm. Stone Cold, yep. The Rock, on and on and on. I mean, so many of these guys that you hear about, they were just, you know, gym rats, uh, working in bars, bouncers. Yeah, they never fully and, intended and, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, come come try professional wrestling. But then once you, once you kind of, you know, dip your toe into that pool, it's a hell of a lifestyle. You get that rock and roll. Uh, especially if you're coming from that nightlife and then, you know, you're seeing six figures, Mm -hmm. whatever the case might be. If you get that, that upper echelon, you know, into the millions, anywhere you want to go back in the day, the, the drugs, the alcohol, again, that rock and roll lifestyle, then you fall in love with that lifestyle and then it just becomes your second nature. Yeah. And to kind of approach this topic in a different way too. I mean, there are some people that have, 
attempted, I guess would be the best way to kind of put it, to, to get into professional wrestling, you know, kind of maybe just kind of playing off of their, the family lineage. Um, I, I would think that, you know, one of the more notable examples, and Carl may not like me for, for mentioning her, but uh, I'll mention her because that's kind of how I felt, Noelle Foley. Uh, she was somebody that, that, that tried to get into wrestling. You could tell that, you know, she had a bit of a, of a want but she didn't have that passion and that desire to really kind of fully do it. Uh, you know, she definitely had the look, but, um, you know, immediately I know when I saw her kind of working in the ring, quote unquote, you know, just smiling all the time and being scared to bump and whatnot, that she just, you know, she wasn't going to do it. But, um, what's your overall take on, on this, Carl? Do, do you feel like there's anybody that kind of has gotten into some notoriety, but, you know, just doesn't give a damn or never really cared about wrestling. Is there anybody that, that you can think off the top of your head or somebody that comes to mind? Uh, honestly, there isn't. You know. I mean, yeah, I mean, coming back to, to what yep. uh, Rick had said there, like, I, I am in agreement with Rick uh, on everything that he said. I mean, uh, people change. Mm -hmm. uh, their likes change. Yep. Their dislikes change. Um, so, I mean... For a while, sure. Maybe she wasn't, you know, wholeheartedly into it. Um, and then Rick was talking about uh, other athletes that have gotten in or this wasn't their first thing, right? Ron Simmons, right? Yep. Uh, Mark Henry. Mark Henry. Kurt Angle. Bodybuilder, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Kurt Angle. Uh, Batista. Yep. Uh, R-Truth. Yep. Right? Like, these, those are all names of people that – not necessarily wanted professional wrestling to be their life, mm -hmm. but made it their life. You know, right? and even uh, Rick had mentioned, you know, people can change. Uh, myself, my, just in the, the course of having this conversation, my take on this has changed. Uh, you know, you guys have necessarily changed my mind, but, you know, you've kind of, you know, talked some reason to me. And I mean, even look at one of the, literally one of the biggest names of all time, um, the, the first quote unquote hall of Famer, Mr. Andre, the giant, you know, one of my personal favorites being, especially being a French Canadian. I mean, this guy at the beginning, I had no intentions of being a professional wrestler. He was just discovered, I believe like in a gym or, uh, in something like, uh, some way like that. And, uh, I mean, look, I mean, he's single-handedly probably the biggest legend in professional wrestling of all time, you know, and he, probably had no intentions on ever ever being a professional wrestler i mean thank god somebody discovered him right so sometimes right. That, that can happen that way and uh we end up with some really some really cool things can happen so yeah and and yeah. going to rick's point again it seems as though a lot of um mid card stars i guess you could say uh are trying to push a different agenda trying to push mm -hmm. their thing uh like rick was saying right like cameron's got this whole fitness thing well what a better platform for her to do than to go to aew sure. one of the hottest things on the television screens right now you know you got the demo god there and he's pushing everything and making things amazing with aew uh not everybody shares the same sentiments about no. aew but i digress um so what i mean it's a platform is what it is. And it's something that she's worked in before has a, some knowledge in mm -hmm. has been in the ring and taken those bumps, but is now able to go out there and push her thing as well. So it's just another platform or Avenue. It seems like for Cameron to go out there and uh, push her brand. And, and even if they go out there and play to some of her mishaps in the past, you know, when, on tough enough when they asked her her favorite match and what you say like alicia fox versus Molina, okay, yeah. or when she was demanding that the that the ref make the three count when naomi was laying face down or you know <laughs> maybe they play to that yeah so yep. they can use that to their advantage as they're trying to you know positively build up nyla in some fashion you know if they would have brought someone else in and used them like that then everyone would be in an uproar oh my i can't believe that they would disrespect this talent like this you know, mm -hmm. that's what we would have got. It's something that we kind of mentioned here as well. I think, hell, we could spin off on a whole nother show with our spinoff <laughs> topics, but not just maybe those that have found their way into professional wrestling or maybe those that got involved for, we'll say for the sake of the conversation here, wrong reasons, and no matter if they fell in love or whatever, yep. is maybe the, the number of second and third generation individuals that are simply relying on professional wrestling for those big paydays. That's a very good point. And, you know, in uh, going along uh, with Cameron, I, I believe she's using a different name in AEW, obviously, for... Uh, oh, she's going under her real name. Which... Yeah. 
And uh, uh, I also Ar- noticed Ariana Andrews or something. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. And now, uh, I, I will say when she said I'm back, did any I, how I want to know the like the percentage of people. It's got to be like less than one percent. <gasps> like, hey, it's Cameron. It's yeah. <laughs> and uh, and on the other side of that, uh, I guess that debut match was. I think that they're gonna. I, I believe it's if, if it hasn't already happened, it's gonna be next week. Um, Formerly from NXT, uh, Tanya Conti is uh, gonna be um, in that match as well. So it looks like she maybe has some kind of handshake agreement or doing something with well, AEW as know, well. A lot so. of this too is where they're taping at. It. It's yeah. how many how can people get there without travel? Right. So because you know a lot of places when you go to Florida now, mm-hmm. if you return home. They've got, you know, they're, I guess it's not mandatory. How do you enforce it? But they're requesting that you self quarantine. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many states are, you know, getting behind that. So it's okay. Who's, who's within the Jacksonville area that can get here within driving? Yep. You know, maybe we don't have to put them up. You got to think right now, you know, WWE's reporting record revenue numbers. Yeah. It's, you know, they're sitting all this because they're not using that travel. They're not booking arenas. They're not on the road and all that. Yep. They've got those, those huge television deals. Now, AEW never had all that big of a bank. They, they yep. weren't doing the live events. They were, re- they were heavily relying on those gates going town to town each yep. and every week. That must see dynamite programming. They've lost all that. Mm-hmm. And you got to, you got to believe no matter what the circumstance, the longer it goes, the shorter the leash, you know, gets tightened from Papa Khan. Yeah. You know, and this could branch off into a lot of the topic, which I think we'll kind of uh, possibly ad- address next week here. Because I've been seeing a lot of people posting about this, of how AEW is becoming the dumping ground for all the unwanted WWE talent. You know, we've mentioned it as well. You know, and Rick made a very good point, uh, you know, where Dynamite is being taped has a big thing to do with it. You know, we have all this talent in the area looking for things to do. And Cody and the AEW crew are saying, come and work with us. If you're not doing anything, if you're available, you know, come over with us. So uh, I think uh, we're kind of seeing some skewed kind of opinions on this when people are, are just looking too much on just on the surface and going, oh, well, EW is just taking all the cast offs and all the, the unwanted and whatnot. I think you could possibly make that argument, but at the same time, like I had said, you know, we have room for these people to be used. Why not use them? If if it can be good, all I can say is if they're going to do it, you know, with Cameron and with uh, Tynera and some of the other ones, as long as you're going to go on there, at least make, Make it good. No, don't just kind of half-ass it or, or just do it for the payday. It'll actually look like you care. That's all I ask. Six weeks ago, the WWE was vilified, and they were bastards for firing these people. And, and now yeah. and now the fans are screaming that AEW is making a major right. mistake by hiring them. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah some uh, interesting things going on there. Yeah. yeah. You know, people in another one, too, for the longest time, you know, and us as well, you know, we were crying for that – alternative to WWE and now we're seeing people turn on the AEW product already. Oh, you know, they're, they're already too much like W. It's like you, you guys were the the ones clamoring for this alternative. And now that you have the alternative, you hate it. I just, it's, well, no, it's fans it's can be so fickle. I'm telling you. It's not an alternative. They're yeah. turning into WWE light. Yeah. It's they're definitely uh, true to a certain extent there. All right, guys. Well, let's wrap it up for this week. I'm sure we could probably go for hours and hours and make this like a five hour episode if we wanted to, but uh, we, we yeah. You know what? We probably could. And yeah. since you mentioned an alternative, yeah. okay, so I'm, I'm going to play this for everybody. Here okay. is your alternative. Here we go. Hi, my name is Barry Radcliffe. You might recognize me from such films as The Longest Ride or Dead 2. Now, as a successful actor, I have two planes, a supermodel wife, countless exotic cars, and a ton of cash. You might think it couldn't get any better than this, but... You'd be wrong for only $4.99. You could get OVW Wrestling Network.com. That's OVW Wrestling Network.com for only $4.99. Now, will your life be as good as this? No. Will it be better? Yes, and I guarantee that. That's not valid anywhere. OVW Wrestling Network.com is only $4.99. Tomorrow's yesterday is today. Prices so low, they're insane. Yeah, there you go. Even uh, our friend Dusty Gold is going to be a regular up there on EV- OVW. I know, Rick, you are doing some stuff with them. Our friend Michael Melkor, uh, f- five bucks a month for all that OVW content. I think that's a pretty sweet deal. Yes, it is. I wanted to make sure that we plugged that mm-hmm. for all Good of catch, our friends over at OVW yeah. because uh, – yeah, I mean, we don't get any type of compensation from OVW at all, but we love the product and we love the people there. And I mean, I guess kind of Al Snow, right? Al of Snow course. is of OVW. Yes, so of course. in a roundabout way, we're family. So we got to support them. Absolutely. 
All right, Isabel, before we wrap it up here, uh, our guest, uh, Mr. Rick Vickery, uh go ahead and, uh, and plug your social media and everything that you're up to these days. Well, for, for everybody out there, as we're just wrapping up here on Turnbuckle Talk, a must listen. Your next podcast, head right on over to hackerhameen.podbeam.com, the Monday locker room with myself, the great Ben Hameen, the doctor, Ted McNaylor, the man beast, both individuals of OVW fame. Uh, but we are joined by the special guest, the, the man of the hour, the hustler, Rip Rogers, uh, the, the endless wealth of knowledge that is shared throughout you know, our, our hour 45 to an hour minute conversation with him. Must listen. You're going to want to check that out. Uh, and in addition to that, all of the content that you get from the hackerhameen.podbean.com, uh, week-long original programming from the pros, as I've mentioned, you got Ted McNaylor, Ben Hamin, in addition to that, Strangler Steve King, Chris Silvio, on and on, all the original programming, breaking down uh, the headlines, the shows, the ins and outs of professional wrestling. If you want true insight, oh, how the hell could I forget there? Stevie <laughs> Richard. <laughs> yes. How could I forget there? So much going on over again at tackerhameen.podbean.com. Or you can keep up with me personally, Rick Vickery, Richard Bronson Vickery, across all social media at The Real RBV. Fantastic. And for, for myself, of course, you can uh, find me on Facebook if you so wish. Just uh, look up my name, uh, Joe Warren. You can find me there. I don't really do Twitter or Instagram, so you likely won't find me on there. But uh, recently for myself, the, this uh, just over the last few days here, uh, Rick had mentioned the Homie Media Group. I'm going to be doing some work with uh, you guys over there. I'm going to be doing some audio producing for a few of the shows over there. So looking forward to uh, doing some of that work over there. And um, yeah, that, that's really about it for myself. Um, Carl, we, we've already, we've given some love to collar and elbow brand.com, but uh, how about uh, a little love for our other sponsor uh, Phoenix? I know you've been using their products a little bit lately. How's that been going? I have been. I have been using what they call their super greens, and the super greens have been doing amazing for me. I am super happy with the product so far. Uh, go and check out fnxfit.com uh, over there, or you can uh, take a look down below in the ticker there. That is the link that we have for our personal little area on uh, FNX fits or Phoenix fits, uh, use our promo code TB talk pod, all one word, and you're going to get 15% off your entire order, which is just an amazing deal. Um, they've got pre-workout, they've got post-workout, they've got, uh, protein powders, they've got the super greens, they've got testosterone, they've got, uh, uh, collagen builders and restore. So a lot of different products there and they have, shirts and shorts and and merchandise as well so mm -hmm. if you just want to represent uh the brand by wearing a t-shirt go and buy one and save 15 percent off when you use the promo code tv talk pod as for our social media facebook instagram and twitter we're found at tv talk pod and myself see my name right there right there so i mean you can always try searching out that name and uh it should bring you to uh, Facebook as well. That is where I am. Um, but yeah, I mean, go ahead and check out our social medias. Uh, again, I don't want to forget. We have a contest going on. We want to hit 500 people on our Facebook page at TB talk pod. All you have to do is send us a message message. Let us know that you have shared it or that you have invited people to come to the page. And once we hit 500 people, we're going to be having that draw yes. for an autographed Jake, the snake Roberts photo, uh, as well as have you on the show as a guest host of turnbuckle talk. So cool. help us out, get us to the 500, be a guest on the show and win yourself an autographed Jake, the snake Roberts photo. And just to make mention of one thing before we do wrap it up here, of course, Carl has set up uh, my Shopify uh, with some of our own uh, stuff there. I see it coming up on the ticker there. I mean, we've got shirts over there. We've got mugs. We've got hats. We've got uh, COVID masks if you like wearing masks. So, yeah, I've actually ordered myself a shirt, and uh, hopefully it's coming soon. I'll be uh, sporting it on the podcast here to kind of show off. Carl's uh, got the, the purple turnbuckle talk uh, one there uh, as well. So, yeah. Uh, some cool stuff there. And, uh, of course, the proceeds from that go to support our show as well. So some uh, some good stuff there. We got so much going on. Damn. Right? We definitely <laughs> do. 
All right, we guys. Need those, uh, we need those checks to start coming in the mail, though. Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, we're working on that. All right, guys. Well, we'll wrap up for this week, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Have a nice day. It's me, it's me. It's an honor to be the beat. As you can tell in the background, we are out celebrating. That is what we do here at HittingTheParks.com. And I invite everyone to continue to tune in to Turnbuckle Talk, but check out all of our other shows we have. You can find that all at HittingTheParks.com. Run. I used to wear jeans, I mean tie and slacks, I had long shaggy hair, it's cut short and slick back. I drank a three dollar wine, it was cocktails to do, it was downtown, came my time for you. And then a bottle of can Silk on the well I wasn't right on a man I hush puppies and sneakers No metallic in his shoes Because downtown Came up time for you When you told me that you love me Said I could be a man Then you said I had no more style Than a rat in a garbage can you made me drive away. You taught me how to eat snails and caviar on a plate. The most sitting in the alley with the boys drinking booze. It was downtown, came up time for you. When you told me that you loved me, you said I could be a man. Then you said I had no more style than a rat in a garden. Can't manicure is it fine? French lessons at six. Oh, don't tell me you can't teach a dog new tricks. We're going out on the town. My friends spread the news. It's downtown, game up town for you. Darling, downtown, game up town for you. Oh, darling, downtown, game up town.